But when you're working in the other dimension, scalar energy dimension, you're no longer bound by time and space. I know it's difficult for some people to grasp this, but if you stay with the electromagnetic spectrum, you're, you're predicated upon that time and space and you're bound, you're shackled to time and space. You get out of that dimension. The other dimension, you can travel amongst galaxies, as you said, in a, in a short period of time. Now, there is one man, and I want the audience to study this man, Victor Grebenikov, G-R-E-B-E-N-N-I-K-O-V. Grebenikov saw that there were certain beetles that would hover, that would levitate. So he wanted to imitate those levitating beetles, if you will. And he created a flying platform under that principle to levitate, to, to experience anti-gravity. Now, when Grebenikov was on this flying platform, it was a scalar energy flying platform that experienced anti-gravity, uh, Grebenikov saw that he was out of time, meaning what? Every time he was in this flying platform, so to speak, in this anti-gravity environment, his, his uh, wristwatch did not advance because his wristwatch did not recognize time. He transcended time. And when he was on this flying platform, he also recognized he never had any G-forces against his body. He could move about at hundreds of miles an hour, and he had no sensation of, of gravity. Why? He was in an anti-gravity uh, cocoon, if you will. His hair would never flutter. His clothes would, would remain without any incidents from the elements, so to speak. So it has been done, and it's been proven by this great uh, Russian scientist, Viktor Grobenikov, that is within a scalar energy environment, you're outside of time and space, and he could move about quite, quite readily on this flying platform at hundreds of miles per hour, and that there were peculiar events that he recognized when he was in this anti-gravity environment. Um, he, he recognized that some people could not see him. He was invisible to people. Uh, on the earth. He recognized that many times that he was perhaps um, not able to cast a shadow um, with his flying platform because it, you're at a different perspective of light and how light interprets a flying platform. What is my point? Well, there might be some analogy here between the, the rudimentary work of Viktor Grobenikov with a flying platform and the, and the flying uh, instruments or the UFOs that we see today Meaning what? Meaning that gravity can be overcome. Meaning that if Viktor Grobenikov could create flying platforms, and no, it was crude, but it, nonetheless, it was the beginning of this science, and that these, these flying platforms are in a dimension outside of the electromagnetic dimension, and hence they're not subject to electricity or magnetism, 